us, the 4,500 or so boys who have passed through our doors. Ask these fortunate few. Who thanks to James Dewar's remarkable legacy. We're offered a scholarship that will change their lives. Ask the families whose lives have also been transformed. Knowing that their boy has a chance at a better future. And ask the mothers who gave up their young sons so that they could have a lifetime of possibility. They'll tell you it's a magical place. They had all these values that they were going to instill in our boys. But what came home was none of it. I had a destroyed soul come home. Welcome to another episode of We Were Children, a Dilworth School Survivors Vlog. Today we're going to talk about the real Dilworth effect. Events that were traumatic at the time, the victims repressed the memories. For those viewers who don't know what a repressed memory is, here is the meaning. Repressed memory occurs when trauma is too severe to be kept in conscious memory and is removed by repression or disassociation or both. At some later time it may be recalled, often under innocuous circumstances, and reappears in conscious memory. Repressed trauma memories don't exist, but there is such a thing as an unconscious trauma memory. The amygdalae in the young brain are fully developed before the hippocampal system is, leaving us able to store trauma memories at a very young age, without being conscious of the reasons. This can lead to phobias and panic disorders that are very hard to overcome, as the associated memories are unconscious. We're going to talk to two survivors who had repressed memories. These repressed memories have only returned to the survivors because witnesses of the experience have come forward today with statements. Rodney Ty had a repressed memory experience. Let's talk to Rod. Welcome back, Rod, to the We Were Children channel. Recapping, Rod, what years did you attend Dilworth School? I attended Dilworth from 1972 to 1978. Rod, you suffered a traumatic bullying experience while at Dilworth School, where it was that traumatic you repressed it for 45 years. Would you like to tell us about that? Um... Yeah, I um, um, I got put in. Um, well, I was down at the pool at the time, and um, <clears throat> I got taken out of away from the pool <clears throat> by seniors that were chasing me, and I um, with uh, the tire inner tubes. Um, and I got chased up to the um, common room and the billiard room at the time um, in Watling House, and they uh, put three inner tubes over me so I couldn't move, and um, they threw billiard balls at my head till they knocked me out, basically. That was the real Dilworth effect. Did you report this at the time? Um, I'll be honest, no, I didn't. Um, I was pretty well knocked out um, that time around. And um, to be honest, I couldn't remember much of it um, until my friend uh, in Christchurch who had witnessed it and was my friend at the time uh, brought it up to me again and told me. And I thought, I remember now what happened. But um yeah, I was uh, pretty well knocked unconscious that time. So this was a repressed memory that you have only been recently made aware of because a witness who has reminded you of the traumatic event at the time, and it was probably the code of silence as to why you never told anyone. Yeah, I um, I just would not have told anyone about that sort of thing. Being the seniors um, that chased me and... Uh, did that to me basically uh if you're pimping or um telling on um seniors that it's gonna come back to you tenfold um yeah. i've i thought that that'd be like uh the very least i would have got if i'd um 
tried to tell on them in any way or or tell on them through tutors and uh, for them to track them down and cane them maybe or something, they would have got me behind the scenes so many times. So you just yeah. let, used to let that sort of thing go, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you, Rod, for sharing your story with us today. Gratefully appreciated. The other survivor with a repressed experience is myself. After I told my own survivor account in episode one, a formal student sent me a message. This is what they had to say. Hi, Greg. I just saw your We Were Children story. Great job setting it up and your story was compelling. I was at Dilworth about when you were and remember you quite well. I have a memory of all of us boys in a dorm room one night and a senior who hit you, Big Mac. His little brother was walking around bawling loudly, couldn't calm him down. Peter Dignan got us all to sit down in the dorm and was asking what was wrong. We didn't know. Dignan was asking you what had gone on and you shook your head and said you didn't know too. So in comes Big Brother sits down, watching him cry, and he was getting upset, angry and embarrassed. This went on for ten minutes, until little bro said something about being a Maori and looked at you. That's when Dignan saw Big Mac's face and stood up to calm him down. But he just exploded out of the blue, pushed past Dignan, knocking him over, and dived on you, and just went mental with massive punches to your head. He was screaming at you, we kids were in shock, and it seemed like ages till Dignan peeled Big Mac off you. He had to put him in a body lock hold to keep him down. Five minutes later, Big Mac was in tears too. Your face was a mess, we were all stunned. Dignan went on to say there was nothing racial going, and that maybe things were heard wrong. With your nose and eye injuries, this was a major trauma to your head, maybe more than being King hit as was repeated brutal hard punches by a larger guy out of control. I don't remember if he sent you to Matron, as he cleared everyone out. Big Mac was led out by Dignan, with his arm around him, and they just left you there. That attack was the most vicious thing I ever saw at that school, and witnessed by over a dozen. Memory is a funny thing, but that one always stayed in my mind. This was a severe physical assault by Martin McCurry that I had totally repressed until I read this message. Now I have a vague memory of the incident and I believe the younger brother William McCurry was having a nightmare and when he came around with everyone standing around him, he was embarrassed and he then implied I had something to do with it, causing his big brother Mac, Martin McCurry, to severely assault me. Let me just say the force of his anger of being able to knock over Peter Dignan, who was six foot three inches tall and weighed 90 kilos at the time. He was also an Olympic rower who won bronze in the Montreal Olympic Games. This was some feat. It shows he lost it and was totally out of control with rage. This severe physical assault on me by a guy twice my size is beyond comprehension. Let me finish this episode with a bit more of the Dilworth Effect promotional video. With tears in their eyes, heads held high. And that is the Dilworth Effect. And as more than 4,500 good men will tell you. It's worth it. If Isabella Dorth was alive today, she would be.